Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jordan, and I am the manager of online education programs at COSI. Thank you all very much for joining me today for the 2020 COSI Science Festival. As you know, the, the festival has moved from a four-day physical event to an all-digital format and during the festival. You can join us uh, at several events digitally, ranging from topics on mindfulness to studying rocks and minerals. On Saturday, we are excited to have you join us. We can't join together for the big science celebration like we had hoped, but we hope you will join us digitally from home with activities that you can share. So we hope to see photos and videos of your science experiments, of you guys doing those activities in action, and we wanna see them shared on our social media. You can share those with us at hashtag COSI SciFest. So make a volcano, show us your COSI slime. We'd love to see your experiments on our social media using hashtag COSI SciFest. And of course, we couldn't have done this program without our sponsors and partners. So we wanna give them a big shout out, especially to our visionary sponsor, Patel. Thank you very much. We could not have done this without you. During the program today, we will have opportunity for uh, questions and comments. You'll be able to use the chat. If you are on a desktop device, you can hover over the Zoom window and find the chat icon to open the chat. If you're on a mobile device, you might have to tap your screen and you'll be able to find the icon there. And then you can click back to return to the video after you have entered your chat. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout and we'll try to uh, field some questions as they come in and then we'll save time for questions at the end as well. It is now my great pleasure to welcome to our program, Monica Del Lago, and thank you very much for joining us. And I'll turn the program over to you. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be here with you and to have you here. Um, this is our first, um, I'm, I'm part of the Department of Mathematics as, as OSU. We have a group called Buckeye Aha Math Moments, um, where we hope to inspire a lot of aha moments in math to, um, for everybody. We were part of COSI Science Fest last year, uh, uh, part of the science, big science celebration. And we try to join uh, now digitally uh, because of the circumstances. So this is our first online program and we're very excited to have it and I hope you all enjoy it. Um, so without further ado, like I said, this is going to be uh, a snail race. You all know that. So let me share that snail race for you. So what we have here are 12, 12 snail. They are numbered from one to 12. And the way they are going to move, of course, they're not real snails, so they're going to move with dice, as many as we have, as we do in many um, board games. Um, so the way they're going to, to move is, I'm gonna roll two dice, the two dice that you see here in your screen, um, and then, and sorry about that. Um, so I'm gonna roll the dice, and then you're going to be able to, whatever number we get here, for example, if we, if we were to roll these, the snail that would move would be snail number two because the snail that moves is the one from the summing up the, the dice, the numbers that the dice show. So in this case, the, the snail that will move would be snail number two. Um, and so now what I'm gonna ask you to do is we're gonna do a snail race. So you can bet on your favorite snail. You know the rules, you know how they move. So we roll the dice, we're gonna keep on rolling it. So if next time, so let's, let's give it a try. Um, next time I'm rolling a nine because it's four, five plus four, that gives me nine. So the snail that is moving is the snail number nine. So what I'm going, going to ask you now is choose a snail. Which snail do you want to bet on? If you were to choose a, you have to bet on the snail that you think is going to win, of course. So go ahead and on the chat, type which snail you're betting to. Um, 12. So Sarah says she's betting on 12. So I'm going to write Sarah's name in here. Um, there's more than, there's a lot of people in here, certainly more than 12. So I'm not going to be able to put all your names, um, but I'm going to write a, a few in here just so we know who's betting on, on each one. Carrie says eight. So we have a few. Gracie says seven. Again, sorry that I cannot write everybody's names. I'm just writing a few, as, as I said. And, and again, uh, you can bet on one that, that's already been used. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so 
I'm going to stop there. You can still write if you haven't said any, you can still choose yours. Be, be sure to be betting on one and try not to change your choice as we, as we move forward. Um, okay, so I'm going to start again. So that, that was just an example, the snail number nine moving. Uh, but now we're going to do it. So first step, I'm rolling the dice. We have a two. So Joshua's chosen snail is moving now. Um, and I, I guess many others also might have chosen number two. So let's do it again. And now we have uh, 11, because that's six plus five, that's 11. So this is nail, is nail number 11 is moving. We do it again. Now we have a four. Um, and we could keep doing these. Now we have a 12. As you see right now, they're all pretty much, I mean, there's ones that have already moved and ones that are already at the start line. Uh, but we don't have a, a definite winner so far, right? So to avoid doing these once and again and again, we now have an eight. I'm going to cl click here where it says auto raise. And let's see what happens. So now we get, without me having to click every time on rolling the dice, we get to see who's moving. So we now have a seven and eight are pretty much the ones that are moving and are ahead of the race, definitely ahead. Um, snail number nine is right back, but snail number seven is definitely ahead. And we keep seeing these. Um, some other snails are trying to catch up, but seven and eight are definitely in the front. And while we have uh, snail number two, snail number 11 and 12 are really far behind, um, snail number seven is almost making it to the end line. So while we're doing this, try to think of, if you can think of a mathematical reason why this snail, snail number seven, seems to be going to be the winner. Um, now even snails number eight and six, who were very close at the beginning with number seven, are now getting behind and number seven seems to be the definite winner, uh, although it hasn't still made it till the end. It's getting behind, but it's, yeah, so it's nail seven wins, right? Right now it won. Okay, so why is this? Um, Maybe you try and write in the chat some reasons why you think this might be the case, uh, but let me try to explain why that is. Okay, let's see some reasons. <laughs> so now we get, oh, uh, someone is saying eight, 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 it's in the middle. That's a good observation, right? So seven, there's nail that one, it's in the middle. But really that's just, I mean, why is it special about being in the middle? If I had arranged the numbers in a different way, um, would the one that, it doesn't matter which, if I had put as nail number one, for example, in the middle, would that still be the winner? More combos equals seven. So that's a good point. There are lots of combinations to get seven. So let's talk about that. Some people are saying, are talking about combos or combinations. So what are we, are we talking about in there? Okay, so let's, let's say, so how many ways can we roll a two, for example? Well, oops, sorry. So let's, let's think that we have two different dice to, to be able to differ, to make a difference between them, to distinguish them. I'm gonna, um, I have a green dice and a white dice just so that I can distinguish them. Um, so the only ways of rolling a two is getting a one on both dice, right? Both on the green and on the white. And that's the only possible way of getting a, a two. While how many ways are there of getting a, a seven? Well, for example, we could have a six on the white dice and a green on the, um, and sorry, and a one on the green. And we also could have it the other way around. So six on the green one and one on the white one. But that's not even all the possibilities. There are more. So we could have five and two, and we could have it this way, so green and, and white, or the other way around. And it's still five and two, but it's two different combinations because in one, the five is on the green dice, whereas in the other one, the five is on the white dice. So it's different, def definitely different ones. And we can also have four and three. 
and the, and switching the, the the dice the numbers in the dice in the color dice. Um, so is that all? Are those all those all the possible combinations? Well, yes. Why? How do I know that? Because I have a combination with one, then I have a combination with two, and there's no other possible way of adding one plus something else to get a seven. It's just one. If I'm adding one, I have to put a seven, a six, sorry, to make a seven. Same here with the two. If, I'm, if I have a two, the other possible thing could, can only be a five. I cannot put another number in here together with the two to get a seven. And then with the three, it's the same thing. And then now I'm used all the numbers. So there's only, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have all possible ways of possible numbers that I can roll in a dice. I have found a, a combination with one of them to, to roll a seven. So those are all my possible combinations to, work, to roll a seven, but it's a lot. It's set six different ways of rolling a seven versus two, only two different ways of rolling a two. So let's examine um, the possible combinations for all different numbers, right? So here I'm making a table and I have the different numbers that I can roll in my white dice and the different numbers that I can roll on my green dice. Um, so for example, if I get a one in the white and a one in the green, we already know we're getting a two, right? Um, if on the contrary, I still get a one on my green dice, but I get a two on my white dice, I get a three because that's two plus one. And then again, green, um, one in the green and then three in the white, that makes a four. One green, four white, that makes a five. Uh, green one, white five, that makes a six. Green white one, um, white six, that makes a seven. And I could keep on doing the same thing. So now I look at, at what if I roll a two in my green dice? And then what happens when I roll different things on my white dice? So I would get a three with the one, a four with the two, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in the same manner, I could fill up my whole table. There you go. And notice that I have colored same numbers with the same color so that we are able to distinguish them better. Here are the seven different combinations that we had identified on the previous slide um, for getting a seven. So for example, six and one and, and five and two and four and three, those all, we have already listed them and we know all those give a seven. So there's six different ways. Whereas the two, we already saw there's only one possible way. Remember that we have a snail number one and there's not even, there's nothing in my table that can give me a one. So it was a wise choice not to choose um, snail number one because there's nothing, there's no possibility to rolling two dice, there's never gonna give a one. Um, and we have, we can see in here that we have two threes, two ways of getting a rolling a three, three ways of rolling a four, four ways of rolling a five, um, five ways of rolling a six. We already say, said that six, there are six different ways of rolling a seven, five different ways of rolling an eight, four different ways of rolling a nine, three different ways of rolling a 10, two different ways of rolling a, an 11, and then one, just one again of one way of rolling a 12, which would be six and six. There's no other way because I could, if I could get a seven on one of my dice, then yes, I could make maybe seven plus five also give me 12, but there's no dice that give me seven. A seven is not a number in my dice. So I'm never going to get a 12 in a different way other than six plus six. So from looking at this table, we could already see that there are 36, so six per row, six, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. So in total, there are 36 different combinations that I can roll when I roll two dice. And out of those 36, like we said, six give me a seven, um, five give me six, et cetera, et cetera. So of course, because the seven is the one that has more possibilities, is the one that has a bigger probability of winning. In other words, um, so the probability of rolling a two, because there's only one combination, one possible combination out of 36. We said that some of you, depending on what grade in school are, or if you already are past grade school, 
um, you might know that we can say one out of six, uh, one out of 36, that's a way of speaking about probabilities. And another way is just writing it as a fraction. So one over 36, that is the probability of rolling a two. Now rolling a three, because there are two possible combinations that can give me a, two, a three, then that is two out of 36. There are two possibilities out of 36 different ones that might give me a three. So the probability of that is two over 36, which if you know about fractions, you can say that you can notice that um, that gives us one, that's the same thing as one over 18. Um, but if you don't know about fractions or if you're not familiar with probability, it still doesn't matter because you already from the table that we were looking before, you are already able to, to tell, to notice that because there are more possible ways of getting a seven, seven is the one that has a, an advantage. She's the one that um, presumably is going to win more often. Now, another thing about probability is that probability is in, in a way is, is, is chance, it's not definite. So this is not telling us that seven is always going to win. It's just telling us that seven, the snail number seven has a bigger probability of winning and so more often than not, it is going to win, but it's not necessarily always. So I can, I can uh, share the link of the, of the webpage where we were doing the snail race, and you can try it later at home. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you try it enough times, you're, you'll bump into cases where um, snail number seven is not going to be the winner. But that still means most of the time, snail number seven is going to be the, winning, the winner. And even when seven is not, the ones that have then the next probabilities, the next bigger odds of winning are, as you know, if we go back, as, as we know, then if a snail seven doesn't win, then it is more likely that a snail number six or a snail number eight, because those have five different possibilities each of, of rolling their number, um, those are the ones that are likely to win if seven doesn't win and so on, it would be really, really, really weird and really difficult that you saw a snail number two winning. That is something that it's probably never going to happen. That's what, that's what these probabil probabilities are telling us. And continuing with what I was doing, so rolling a four, the probability of rolling a four is uh, three out of 36, which um, if you know about fractions again, that, that's the same thing as one over 12. Um, and we can keep on going. So the probability of rolling a four is one nine. The probability of rolling a six is five over 36. The probability of rolling a seven is one sixth, which is already a much bigger fraction than one over 36, for example, which is the probability of rolling a two. Um, and we can keep it going. So the probability of rolling an eight is five over 36. The probability of rolling a, a nine is one over nine. The probability of rolling a 10 is one over 12. 11 has a probability of one over 18. And I'm oh, sorry, there's a typo in there that should be a 12, but 12 is uh, the probability of 12 winning is one out of 36. Um, and so notice that in here I'm saying this is the probability of rolling a, rolling a two, rolling a three, whatever, right? But that's also the probability of that snail winning because the, win, the winner and the way those nails move depend on what we roll on the dice. So this is the same as saying the probability of a snail number two winning is one over 36, which is very small, whereas the probability of seven winning is one over six, which is the biggest probability out of all the ones that we have in here. And again, the next probabilities, uh, bigger probabilities would be six or um, eight winning because they have five over 36 each. Okay. So after seeing all this, we can do another snail race. Um, and so we can start again. So now you can tell me, let me see if I can actually erase the names in here. Yes, okay. So now you can say again, for which snail are you going to bet? And I'm seeing already that most people is saying seven. And of course that is the, the most reasonable thing to do. Although you can still, maybe say, hey, you know, I have a hunch and I think in this case, seven is not going to win and I'm going for six or I'm going for eight, like Kate who's saying that forever eight, that's good. But I definitely wouldn't recommend um, betting on two on 12 or 12 because that's probably not very likely to happen. So I'm gonna write here, everybody. 
everybody is voting for seven. And so I'm gonna write Sarah is voting for eight. Um, and Jason is still on two, why not? Um, Aaron is going for six and okay, so I'm not gonna do everybody in here, sorry about that. Uh, but let's, let's do the race again and see who wins. So three started and notice how at the beginning it's just, I mean, if you only roll once, it's just, you might as well get any number. But the, there's this, this thing actually, for those of you who are interested, um, there's something called the, the big number law of probability, which means that um, as you roll more and more, then you'll see more, it is more likely that you'll see the results that the probabilities are predicting. So if you only roll, a one, roll, you only roll once, um, it's not, you probably are not gonna get what the probabilities are predicting, but the more times you roll, the more you would see what you expected, in this case, seven winning. Uh, which means that if you, so I think this, this race lasts, I don't know, it's like maybe 15 or so, or so rolls to win. You have to roll 15 times your number to win, something like that. But if you do it up to 100, so if you extend the length of the, of the rails, um, then seven is going to definitely win like 99 out of 100. Actually, one six of the times, if you, if you roll it, if, if this was 100, the length of this was 100, um, then um, 100 over six, that would be the, the number of times that you would see snail seven winning. And that's just this law that I, this, this theorem that I'm talking about, that the more you roll, the more you expect the numbers to reflect what you see on your, on your probabilities. So six is coming actually really close. It has a, it might win. Um, seven is ahead, but six is close enough that with a little bit of luck. So that's actually luck. The word luck means getting something that the odds were not predicted, predicting to happen. Look at that. Wow, so actually it's nail six one. Okay, so Aaron who voted for, who bet for snail six, six and I think there were other people um, going for six as well. They actually won, but seven was pretty close. So this is what I'm talking about. If you, the more times you do it, the more you expect them to reflect what the probabilities are showing. So one sixth of the times you would see um, is nail number seven winning, whereas only one out of 36, you might see is nail number two winning. So that's what these probabilities means. Um, and that's really all for me. I don't know, do you have any questions? Other than someone is asking how the dice rolling are generated. Um, so it's called random numbers generators. Um, and there, there are different methods that you can use for that. But that's uh, more advanced than the scope of this talk. Um, any other questions? Did I have a, ch a hunch for six? Uh, someone did, the person who voted. I think, Aaron, you had one. You had it, right? While we're waiting for questions, can we maybe see another snail race? Sure, yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay, so here you go, and let's start again. Can you do this with real snails? You can try. Um, actually, so this game is very popular and is usually done with horses. Um, so I was planning on doing this in person at the uh, big science celebration with a poster with the horses. Uh, but since we weren't able to do it in person, I found this really ni nice website uh, where you can do it for snails. I didn't have one, I didn't find one for horses. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, there are actual horse races, and, but those do not rely on dice. So you can also compute probabilities for those, but of course it, it depends on analyzing the characteristics and the statistics of when, uh, when the horses win, which horses win more often, 
against which other horses, etc. Okay, so I see some some people still betting. That's okay. You you can you can do that. So George uh, thinks snail number eight is going to win. We'll see if if that's the case. Uh, seven and six are very tight right now. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna share this link with you. It's really short, so you could also copy it from my screen, but in case you just wanna click on it, there it is. Um, so we can come back later. I just wanna share with you also um, our social media. So when we are not staying at home, we do a lot of in-person activities like visiting um, schools, and uh, workshops, we have even been in farmer's markets. So we are all over the place doing different things like this one and sharing our favorite math puzzles, math crafts. Um, and you can, for right now, as um, everything, with everything going virtual, you can follow us on our social media. So here's our Facebook page and we have our Instagram uh, page in there as well, uh, our tag in there. Um, so you can just follow us and find out what else we are doing and just follow us for, for some more um, in at home activities related with fun math. Well, I'll open it up to any questions that you might have for Monica. And I know I have one to start with. Um, so you mentioned, you know, we're talking a lot about betting, but how might a scientist use probability? What are some things that scientists can do with probability? Well, there, there are a lot of things that people can do with probability. Um, one thing that I, I remember right now, because that's something I did in, at school when I was a math student, um, was actually, they, I'm from Mexico, so tequila production, that's a big deal in here. Um, and so they, they plant the agave plants, which is where they take tequila from, um, and they, some, someone, plants them and then delivers them to the productor and they have to decide whether they have a big, a bunch of, of baby plants to say in a way. Um, and they have to decide whether they, they keep that lot that the, the people who planted them are bringing or not. Um, and, and it's a big, a big set of plants so they cannot check that all the plants are health, healthy. So they just take a few of them, sample a few of the plants and check if they are healthy. And they have to decide whether they wanna take the whole lot, the whole, the whole set of plants or not. Um, so they use probability to decide how many, say that the, the whole set of plants is like a thousand plants. How many plants do you have to, to check to see if they're healthy to decide whether um, there's a big chance of your whole set of plants being healthy? Of course, you cannot check them all because it's time consuming, but also because checking them means in a way killing them. I'm not sure if they actually kill them, but they're not, be, they're not able to use them anymore for tequila. So, which is why, why they, uh, what's important uh, to them. So they have to, to check the least amount possible of plants, see if they are healthy, and from there decide that the whole set of plants is healthy or not. Um, and they use probability for that. And that's just a, one example that I can think of right now. Um, but there's many, many, many examples like that. And I'm sure a lot of people are using, I don't have an example at the top of my hand, head, but I'm sure a lot of people are using probability now with, with COVID to analyze even how the disease is spreading, uh, but also about the virus, how the, uh, how the virus works, how it reproduces, et cetera. So yeah, so probability very important in real life. Excellent, thank you. Well, we're almost out of time, but we'll leave our last race going here. And again, if our uh, participants have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Okay, it was great um, seeing you all. Thank you for having me here. And thanks everybody for showing up. I hope you had a good time and you um, learned something new and you have fun. Uh, uh, racing snails. Yes, thank you, Monica, again for presenting the program for us. We had a really good time learning about probability here this morning. Thank you. 
And I'll let all of our guests know that there are programs happening all day today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Next program coming up is from NASA. It's peering into the James Webb Space Telescope. If you're interested in that program, you can find that on the COSI Science Festival Facebook page, where that program is starting in just a few moments. We'll let our last race finish up here, and then we will conclude our program for the day. And it looks like snail number six is very close to winning again, um, although seven is catching up. We'll see if six makes it or seven takes the lead. So it was seven again. Let's try it at home and see how many times you, if you do it a lot of times, how many times seven wins, six wins, et cetera. And do it as, until you find one, a race that number two wins. I think that's a great challenge to end on today. So we encourage all of our guests there to go try that website and race your snails. Thank you all very much and have a great day.